All right, let's get it going. It's your man, the real Casadero, back at it, J. Rasta. What's up, man? I didn't expect a lot of people to be here because it's eleven forty-six on a Tuesday, but it's all good. Uh, for posterity's sake, hold on. Let me hit the record button here. Bam. All right, so this is the first time I've ever done this. I'm live streaming and recording at the same time. So if things get slow, if there's a hiccup or something, uh, that's why. So at any rate, because I'm recording this and I'm going to edit it later on and put it up online. For those of you who don't know who I am, I am the real Casadero. And long story short, 15 years in the military, got out, went in the car. Well, I went to school right when I got out. Left school, went into car sales, left car sales because I was offered a job by Insight Global to work at Microsoft as a system admin. And that's what I do now. And I've been studying code and my whole goal with learning to code. And I've been studying for a long time. So you guys don't think I started like yesterday or two weeks ago. I started this journey back in like 95. And then I took a break for like 14 years with a little code here and there. But most of the time um, in, the, in the military. So now here I am. Um, I picked it all back up in like 2014 and my learning, my learning curve has gone like this. Um, so actually we have Johan on here. Um, I think it was John who brought up the fact that, you know, he likes it when I do like coding videos and stuff like that. And I realized that like one of the best ways for me to learn or for anybody to learn is to talk about the stuff that they're learning to actually teach somebody else how to do the things they're doing because then it sticks in your head you become better at it um and it's just it's 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 probably the best way to to learn how to do anything so i i need this is something i want to do and not necessarily to get a job but so i know how to solve my own problems and i can create products and services to solve other people's problems so right now we're here to, to, to talk about Git and GitHub and the title of the video says save time, money, blah, blah, blah. When, when we go over to GitHub, right, here's, here's the deal with the, here's the deal with the, the money part of GitHub. GitHub allows us to host our website on their server, which is, uh, so for free, for no money, you can have your web page hosted on github.com and git and github they're two completely different things they have the the only way they are related is is because of the of the name and what they do git is a version control system and this is where we save time with the ability to manage versions and we can manage versions of anything and what this means is like we can we can write a what's up bro can you give me a brownie hold on got to get you a brownie So in version control, we save time because what we can do is we can we can create a file and in a programmer's case is code. So we like write a block of code, we get it all figured out, it's doing what we need it to do. And then at some point we want to make changes. Like we want to take a feature away, we want to add a feature, somebody finds a bug and we want to fix the feature. Oftentimes what happens in programming is we'll create something or even in web development, we'll create something and then we want to make some sort of change. And when we go to make that change or go to fix a problem, we break something else. And then our old version doesn't work. So in the olden days, right, if you had like Microsoft Word or some sort of text editor or something, you would save a file and you would like literally name it like version one. And then you would continue working and you would save that. And if everything worked, you would name it version two. And you would just keep going like this and you would have all these different versions. What version control allows us to do is it, is it allows us to keep a history of everything we've done. So whenever we commit something, which is, and you'll see what a commit is, 
that version is like locked in time. And then we can go on and, and make another version of that, like adding features, taking features away. Or we can do what's called a fork, which means we can keep developing this main version and we can take this other thing and we can make all kinds of changes to it while this one is running. And then when we decide that that all works the way we want, we can merge it back together. And now we have this piece of software with new features and we have a record of every of all the changes we made. And that's like getting kind of complicated, but that's what that's what Git is all about. Now, on GitHub, let's see. I don't know if it's going to be inside of the features page. So in, 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 th in this, it says just for coders, but when I was using, when I was in school, I used GitHub for everything. I used it to, I used it to version control my graphics files. So my P, all my Photoshop files, I used the graphics control. I use it to version control uh, my D Adobe Illustrator files. I use it to version control websites, different scripts I was writing in, in Python class, stuff I wrote in Java class, all this stuff. And then another benefit of using GitHub is that we can share this stuff with the world. And the reason why I'm making this particular video is because someone asked me about some code that I was working on the last time I did a live feed. And they asked, where's the code? Like, I want to see the code. And I was like, okay, all right, now I got to upload this code. Well, when I went to do a git commit, I realized I didn't have git. And so that's, that's, that's why we're here. So let's see if I can find, there is a feature in GitHub. I don't know if I'll find it today that allows us to, we can upload a static website to GitHub servers and we can use it as our web page. And if we want to have like a custom domain name, like www.mystuff.com or whatever, whatever you want it to be, you can have your own custom domain name and you can point it at GitHub. So like if we go to the real .com, this web page is, is hosted on GitHub. Um, it's, it's, it's set up using like this, what is it called? It's called a static site generator. So all these blog posts I write and mark down and then I do a git commit and I build it in Jekyll on my machine and it automatically uploads to GitHub. And that's how this web page has come to exist. And there's not a lot going on here. As you can see, the last post I wrote was March 24th. But if you go into Operation Softy, there is a huge crap ton of stuff in here about software development. There's a bunch of typos in here. There's a bunch of spelling errors and spelling mistakes. And some people are going to look at those and they're going to go, oh, well, man, you know, there are spelling mistakes. I don't want to do this. Right. And it's your loss because th this is like this is this. If you go through this whole curriculum, it will make you a software developer. That is like a guarantee, a guarantee. Now, you don't have to go through this whole curriculum to become one. But if you do, you will be probably better than most of the people you talk to. All right. So at any rate, so let's see. Do, 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 do. And then I've got some. This is the stuff I used to make. the. But, but anyway, the whole point of this showing you guys this is this Web page is all hosted on GitHub and it's not fancy. This is very simple, but you can get as fancy as you want. You can make Web pages that look as, as long as they run HTML, CSS and JavaScript and, and you don't have to like point to some database somewhere then they'll work. And there are ways you can even point it to a database. Like there's, there's, they, they call them headless content management systems, right? So this is where like you get all the content in the background, which you can, you can write everything you need in JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. And then if you actually need to access a database, then there are ways to do it. I wouldn't suggest it because of security. Like anybody, anybody who looks at your source code can see how you're accessing this database and they can go do it too. But there's a way to do it. And if you want to get even fancier, then you just pay for hosting. And it's not expensive. I mean, the hosting is like, I don't know, you can find hosting as cheap as like $3 a month. But anyway, so that's how you can save money with GitHub. You save yourself a few bucks a month by hosting your site on GitHub. You've got version control. You've got updates. You've got all this stuff inside of GitHub that you can use. So the first thing we got to do is we got to install Git. I'm on a Windows machine. If we go here into PowerShell, Things are going to be a little slower than they normally are because I'm running OBS in the background, which is recording this video to the hard drive and at the same time streaming it to the Internet. So that's why things are going to be a bit slow. But if we go over in here and we go get 
there is there is no git. Like I can't do a git anything. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go over to git and get the real git. GitHub, you can't download git for for any operating. Well, I don't know. You might be able to do it for Mac. But at any rate, so if we go into Google and we type git do 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 Johan, what's up, brother? All right. So Bitbucket, right? This is what we're looking for. Get scm.com. We go right in here. Make sure you got the HTTPS up there. That means you have a secure connection with Git. And then you just go in and you just find your version. So I am looking for, I'm going to download Windows. And there's probably another way to do this, so like NPM or something like that. But I, yeah, I don't know. All right, 64 bit. If you're running Windows 10, with like the squares and stuff like this. And th I think this Windows 8.2, you're probably on a 64-bit system. Um, what the main difference is, I really, I, I, I don't know, um, efficient memory management, better computational speed. The graphics may look better. Um, but if you, if you don't know if you have a 64-bit system, go with 32. It'll work, it'll work the same. It's not, no, no big deal. All right, and then we have it for Windows Portable. We've got it. So, all right, there we go. So 37 megs downloaded. I'm going to click here. I'm going to go show in folder. This is going to open up the file explorer. And we're going to go right down here. And it is just to execute. Oh, I downloaded it once already. Let's double click this executable file. Let's see how long this takes. We can close that because we won't need it anymore. And I need to clear out my downloads folder. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna take a while. Let's see. There we go. And yep. Seize, let me seize next. This is where it wants to stall Git. We're going to say, yeah, sure, why not? Uh, additional icons on the desktop. No, we don't want any of that stuff. Git bash. This is the command prompt stuff, so we'll leave that. The graphical interface, graphical user interface, we'll leave that. Large file support. Yes, this is for like files that are like over two gigs, I think. Associate .git configuration file with the default text editor. Sure, why not? Uh, with the bash, this is if you're on like a associated.sh files to be run with bash. So there is a version of bash you can install on Windows. I don't have it. I don't use that. Um, use true type font in all console windows. So uh, true type fonts are like crispier fonts. They like they like look better. Um, you can do some research on that, but I'm gonna leave this off because it, it doesn't really matter to me. We we'll go next, and let's see. Setup will create program shortcuts in the following start menu folders, to tell us where it's going to put them, and we're just going to leave it. See to continue. Click next if you would like to select a different folder. All right, so I'm not going to change anything. I don't want to mess anything up, and we're going to leave this blank because we do want a start menu folder. So we'll go next. Use Git from Windows command prompt. All right, so this may be use Git from Bash only. So if we have a version of Bash installed, we can select this. We don't need to do that. We're on Windows, so we might as well leave it on command prompt. Um, use Git and optional Unix tools for the Windows command prompt. Um, no, we're going to leave this just like this is because we're on Windows. And we'll go next. Uh, open SSL library, but of course. Next, uh, check out Windows style commit Unix style line ending. Git will convert LFCLF when checking our text files when committing. Check as is commit Unix. Check as is commit as is. Check out as is commit as is. Check out Windows style. We're gonna. I'm gonna leave it on Windows style. Next. Uh, yes, mint the default terminal. Use Windows default console window. I'm gonna leave Git bash for you. I'm going to leave this like it is. Next. Enable file system caching. Yes. Enable git credential manager. See, it gets real complicated. Enable symbolic links. Ooh, require the secrets. 
permission. I don't want to mess with that. We're just going to go with the defaults. Install. And now we're waiting on this whole install thing to go through. Another reason why I wanted to do this is because um, I have a bunch of files. Like if I go into PowerShell and I keep, I typically keep everything inside of one. I think I have a PowerShell window already open actually. Yeah, I typically keep everything inside of OneDrive and I use I use PowerShell for everything in Windows. There is if you go to um, if you hit the Windows key on your computer, it'll bring up the squares and stuff. And if we hit CMD, it'll take us to the old school command prompt, which is down here. And the command prompt doesn't have PowerShell commands like um, Hmm, let me think of something. Let me think, get, I think get child item may be one of them. And over here, I think we may have a get child item, get child. And then this is the same as DIR if we were over here, but this doesn't have that. So a little bit more robust over here and also Inside of PowerShell, we can use a scripting language that is similar to C Sharp um, to do a lot of different stuff. We can do things like we can concatenate different commands together. We can take uh, we can take one piece of information like I did, like the get child item. We can pipe that into another command and make it do other stuff. So there's the PowerShell is just a very diverse application. It's not it's not super useful in well, it is. It is very useful for regular people, but it's more used as a system admin tool. But there's things we can do with PowerShell, like, um, like for instance, a lot of people might use, a lot of developers use build tools like Gulp and Grunt to automate like tasks. So like, say, for instance, you wanted to start a new project. To start an HTML project, you would create a main folder. So like, check this out. So I'm going to go CD slash uh, OneDrive. So I can tab complete. So if I if I type change directory, O N, and hit tab, it completes to OneDrive, and then I just hit enter, and then I'll be over in the OneDrive folder. So now I'm in the OneDrive folder. And say I wanted to make a new website. Actually, let's go to uh, CD slash write code drink coffee. I would go. I would make the di directory so I could go. Uh, let's see, MKDIR. Uh, new website and this is going to make a directory also in a way to PowerShell in PowerShell to make a new directory is to use the new item command and actually so this would be our primary folder for our new website we'd cd into that new website new website and then we would make our CSS and JS folder so in PowerShell one command we could use is we could go uh, what is it? So we can go new, new item, dash item, new item, uh, CSS, and then we'd go item type is a directory, dir directory, and then we can do that all over again if we just put a colon right there. We can go new item. JS uh, item type. Directory DIR. And what this is, is we've just strung two commands together. So if we hit enter, it's going to make two folders. Now, what's cool is we can automate this entire process. Like we can write a script and we can name that script new project and we can literally just come in here and type new project dot PS and it'll do it'll make all the folders and all this stuff. And like, say, for instance, we use a bunch of different libraries like we, we use. um We may use Bootstrap for our front end for our HTML. We may use jQuery for our JavaScript. And there's a there's actually. I think there's another piece of JavaScript Ruby used that goes along with Bootstrap. It may just be jQuery. I'm 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 not positive. We could write a script that does all of that, and I mean we can like write the script so it'll create the directories. It will do. It will go into the directories, do a node package manager 
install of whatever libraries we want to install and all this stuff. It'll do everything for us. All right. So that's the that's the power of PowerShell. Is this thing done yet? Almost. So that's how we would create a new file. Now, the, now here's the deal, right? This is where version control comes in so handy. So once we've created this, let's create an, a new uh, HTML file. So to create an HTML file from PowerShell, if we have Visual Studio Code installed, all we have to do is type code in whatever our file name is going to be. In this case, I'm going to use index.html. And it's going to open Visual Studio Code with an HTML file that we can edit. And it's going to take a little bit because I'm running all this stuff at the same time. And I think I got like some other programs open. I don't even need open right now. So we'll close this one. And I've got a bunch of Chrome windows open. I will we'll leave those. OBS, PowerShell, that's Git installing. And this is Visual Studio Code. <clears throat> this should speed up on Visual Studio Code like dies now. There we go. All right, so now we're inside of here. In Visual Studio Code, there's a bunch of stuff built in already for us to like start developing stuff right away, but there's some add-ons. I, If you guys are interested in Visual Studio Code, I would say Windows Firewall Blocks feature Visual Studio Code, all that private domain, domain networks. What? Yeah. Oh, what happened? What's going on? I think I hit OK and it just took a while to figure it out. All right, finished. So now that that's all done, if we go into PowerShell, we should be able to type git and get like some help commands. Oh. So we're going to close this PowerShell window and we'll open it again. How this is so slow. Come on. There we go. So these are all of our Git usage commands. And I'm going to show you guys the very basic, basic commands that you're going to need to be like up and running and like doing stuff with Git. So we created our folder. We have actually, let's do this. If we go, ah, the file menu always disappears in here. Uh, uh, Go O, Control O, ah, uh, we gotta go to Chrome. I can't remember. There's there's a way to make the file to make the menu bar disappear. All right, so simple, right? We just go to Google, and we'll go Visual. Studio code menu bar. And I can't be the only person on the planet that this happens to. So we just have to have that. Look, right there. First thing on Stack Overflow, April 18th, 2016. Look, this is what we're looking for, and ours has disappeared. Let's scroll down. Another way to restore the menu bar view toggle menu bar command in the command palette or F1. All right, so let's see. If we can go back and just hit F1. Let's go back. Nope. Oh. Hmm. Oh. I saw I see what he's saying, palette. Uh, another way to restore the menu bar is to trigger the view toggle menu bar command in the command palette F1. All right, I see what he's saying now. So F1 will bring up the command palette and we go view. Uh, actually, we should just be able to type M E N U view toggle menu bar right there. Bam. Let's 
and pop up. Ah, it's back. Okay, so we got our menu bar. Let's go file, open folder, and we will navigate to, and there's another command I just learned today that'll like take us right into PowerShell. I th oh, I know what it is, I know what it is. So we go here, we gotta find that folder we made, and we put that folder in OneDrive. OneDrive, OneDrive, where are you? There it goes, OneDrive, and we had it in Write Code, Drink Coffee. And I think it was like new website right there. All right, so we'll add this folder, select folder. It's gonna open this folder. Yes, we wanna save. It's gonna open that folder and it's gonna show us all the files that are in it. And there's there's index right now. So we got one index file, we've got two folders, JavaScript and CSS, right? So what we can do, let's go, let's go in here and index and write some code real quick. So it's an HTML file. And there may be some add-ons, but as far as I know, right out of the box, you should be able to do this. If we type a, what is this? What is that called? A excla exclamation point, hit tab. It will fill in a lot of the code we need, right? So we've got our language is HTML, English. Uh, the character set we're using is UTF-8. And if you guys don't know about this stuff, look it up, look it up. UTF-8 is like, it's basically a universal character set that uses eight bits um, and it covers like the entire alphabet, all the numbers, and then like a shit ton of emojis. <clears throat> so we use UTF-8, we can do stuff like, like right now at this point in time, we can write code using emojis. I don't know if we can do it in JavaScript, but in other languages, and languages do support emojis. Uh, meta type name, viewport, this is our screen, uh, content width equals device width. So this is saying like, it's telling the browser that the content on the page shouldn't exceed the width of the browser. Um, and then initial scale 1.0. I'm not exactly sure what this means. I have to look that up myself. HTTP equivalent, XUA compatible. Don't know what this means. Uh, content, Internet Explorer, Edge. Document. So this is what we would title our thing. So we call this new website. All right. So new website. And then go down here, we'll get into the body and we'll go like this at H1. This is a live feed on getting started with Git and Git Hub. All right. And then, so we got bada, 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 this H1, we'll put us a paragraph in here, P, uh-oh, if you just type P and hit tab, oh, I don't have, um, I, I should have it, I would use, oh, is it P, because I got caps on, I think, P, P, I, I don't know what's going on, all right, so at any rate, you go P, P and then if we type warm, hit tab, we'll get some warm if some text, and then we should be able to close this just by let's see, do it right here. And then it look, it tells us the P tag right there. So if we hit tab, it'll close it out. We will duplicate this. So we have two, control C, control V, V, and then let's make an unordered list. This right here is some emet. So if we go UL with the less than, with the greater than, this is gonna create some child items. We'll call them list items. And then we'll multiply that by five. And if we hit tab, we get five list items. We go list item one, tab, list item two, tab, list item three, tab, list item four, four tab and list item five now we have five list items and look i must have spelled look I, I put spaces over there space and space and space and we can also do something like this so like say we all want to give these a class or or id or whatever I don't, I don't know right so if we hold down the alt key and we click inside of each one of these we have five different cursors Right, so we can go and we can type uh, ID is equal to a list item. 
and like let's say that's too hard for us let's say we want to change this we can double click this first one and if we hit control d d d d d d d it'll highlight everything that's list item and we can change all of that stuff at the same time so let's go and we can even double click entire words right so now all of these are selected and we can change the names of those that are on list so that, that's just some cool html crap for you guys to let you know mess around with all right, so if we hit control save, and actually there is a, another, let's, I don't think I have it in here. I don't even know if I have node install. Let's go, let's go, let's go to PowerShell and see if we have node install. If we hit, um, if we right click here and go to reveal, not reveal links, but open in command prompt. It opens it in the command prompt. There's probably a way to change that to PowerShell, but we're not going to worry about that right now. I want to see if I have node installed and I do right so th this is this this is the node prompt so like one plus one is equal equal to two true all right all right so we know node works so let's exit out of here so now that we know we have node installed check this out right we can go we can do this from the command prompt or from PowerShell if we go to I'm going to open PowerShell because it's my favorite and I like it so much. Uh, somebody said something over here. Control shift, control shift D, duplicate the selected text. Look at that. My man. Hold on. I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it. Control shift D. Oh, it didn't do it, man. It did something else, bro. Maybe I hit control caps D. No, I didn't. Not not in Visual Studio Code. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what happened, man. Uh, uh, I want my File Explorer back, Jack. I want my File Explorer back. If we click up here, take us back to the File Explorer. Let's go into. Actually, I'm try one more time. Control Shift D. No, it's not doing it, man. It's it's it's. I probably got some goofy key binding set up in here, though. All right. So if we, but if we go back over here to our PowerShell window, and we do, so we have Node install. For those of you who don't have Node, Node is like Node allows us to do so much stuff away from the internet, and it is like if you want to write app, if you want to write applications in JavaScript. Node is prop. I mean, there's other things that do what Node does, but Node is like so easy to install. It's it's unbelievable. And if you go over to NodeJS.com, it's like super quick. So like Node, I don't think it's NodeJS.com. We'll just type NodeJS in Google, and it'll take it. It'll you'll see. Hold on. All right. So look, Node.js, NodeJS.org. That's what we're looking for. We go here. Download Node, install Node, just follow the default instructions, um, and then restart your PowerShell, and you're going to have Node. And when you have Node, you have what's called the Node Packet Package, Node Packet, Node Packet Manager, or Node Package Manager. And what that means is we can install like different libraries, different pieces of code to help us do things. And one of the things I'm going to install right now is Live Server. So if we go think it is np npm install g live server it's doing this thing it's going to connect up to the web and it's going to install it. look it's, do it's doing this thing it's doing this thing it's this is this is the power this is the beauty now, one thing, um, when it comes to like developing stuff, this is one of the reasons why I really wanted to learn JavaScript. Like, and I mean, I wanted, I want to learn it because I want to, I want to build cool stuff. But also, like, if you if you decide to use a library that does something, and that library changes one day, or or people stop working on it, um, or you fall in love with it and nobody wants to take care of it, like, you now have the ability to to make stuff. Like, you can, you can. 
modify the library yourself. You can take control of the projects, the open source project. There's a bunch of different things you can do. Um, and one of the things that I've seen, not a lot, but, but a, a few times, are people who are taking open source projects and they are forking them and they're creating businesses from these things. Like there's a guy who makes like 80 grand a month. Now, now he wrote the open source project. He maintains it. There's a bunch of contributors to it, but he has what he calls a, a production version of the software where he sells the software in support to companies. And the number of clients he has now, $80,000 a month in income. And this is a with software that me and you can go download and use for free. We don't get the support that that a company gets by paying him a thousand dollars a month, but we get to use the software. So there is money in open source, just so you guys know. And it is a good way to, to like learn and understand this stuff. Six months ago, if, if jQuery, I didn't understand what it was. I didn't understand how it worked. Node, I didn't understand what it was. I didn't understand how it worked. Node package manager, you guys get the point. But now I understand exactly how jQuery works. And I could go out and I could write my own library that does what jQuery does. It would take me a long time, but I could do it. And I only learned that from like really digging into JavaScript. So check it out. So we got live server uh, install right now. So we're going to close this window. If we go back here and we go into our index and we go reveal and explore. No, not reveal and explore. My bad. We're going to close this. We're going to go reveal in <clears throat> open in command prompt and we go li and the reason why we're doing that is because when we go open in command prompt we are positive that that the folder that is opened is the web is the folder that this index.html file is in and we can go live server to run the live server live server is not recognized as an internal or external command uh oh what have i done i've done something wrong Uh, uh, mm. Hmm. Hmm. Learn something new every day, huh? All right, CD slash OneDrive. Slash write code slash new website and lives oh, live server. Mm. <laughs> Something is wrong. So what we got to do is we got to bust out our instructions. So check this out. Let's go into Chrome, 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 and I use a program called Pinboard. Pin. Board, B O A R D. Pinboard, social bookmarking for introverts. All right. And so Pinboard is super cheap. It's like 11 bucks for like a lifetime subscription or some craziness like that. When I, when I, the, the way this guy has this set up is really, th this is another project. Like this dude like maintains it himself. I don't know if he makes a living from it, but he, it's enough for it to pay for itself. Um, and you can follow Pinboard on Twitter if you guys are interested in something like that. But anyway, this is a place to store like all of your bookmarks. So your bookmarks are available on every machine. And I have a bunch of bookmarks in here. So check it out. Live preview editing Visual Studio Code. This is a I bookmarked this seven hours ago. Because I was looking for how to uh, how to get jiggy with with the live reload. All right, right click my computer, select properties, select advanced system settings, select tab advanced, click on environment variables. What? What? Oh, I don't want to check if anything's in the path. I may at some point go select path and click edit the path where your user should contain. That's the system wide path should contain. Oh, I was in OBS. Installing the web server, we did that install, npm install, live server, live server. All right, what's going on here? In Visual Studio Code, right click index, select open in console, console window type live server. Live server should now start and we'll keep running, blah, blah, blah. You should see a website saying hello world. 
All right, so we will have to do this more than likely. Right click my computer. All right, so let's go to my computer. It should be actually. Uh, we got that one out here. What are you doing, man? All right. Advanced system settings. Oh, yeah, advanced system settings. Tab advanced. Tab advanced. Okay, we're there. Environment variables. I had to do this once before for something else. It freaking drive me crazy. Advanced tab. Click on environmental variable. What the fuck? Oh, check it out right there. Environmental variables. Ah, now we got to go in and look at our path. Select path and click edit. See username. Oh, 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 oh. Let's see. Pass the real Casadero. Oh, okay. I, so at one point, right, this, the, the my, my home directory wasn't always named the real Casadero. I wanted to change it for when I do videos like this. And when I did, I broke, I broke everything on the computer. It was ridiculous. Let's see there are two paths one for your users at the top of the window and one for system wide at the bottom select path and click edit the path for your user should contain this username the system wide path should contain this so go in files move this okay uh, it's the only one there's only one there's only one So we're going to edit. All right, so we'll go C, oh, shuck, C slash. Program files. Node.js slash and then we're gonna I'm gonna copy this C going to add another one new V and then this one is gonna be slash users users slash The real Cedero C S A D R O no J S nope. App data. App data, app data, app data. Actually we can just get rid of all of this right here, right? Casadero A P P D A T A slash Roaming R O A M I N G npm let's make sure we got this right i guess i could have just copied and pasted most of this stuff all right uh c c users i don't think it matters if it's capital or not but i could be wrong so better safe than sorry c users real casadero that is me that c should be capital app data roaming r-o-a-m-i-n-g r-o-a-m-i-n-g npm okay and then we've got C program file program files C program files no JS all right no JS okay let's capitalize these C's this is driving me nuts how, like how they don't match the other ones all right so we capitalize those C oh did I hit okay oh man shucks man. Yep, it's all in there. And then let me see, let me see, let me see. The system wide path should contain. I think this is 
Uh oh, cancel. Pat, 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 pat. Where you at, buddy? Be my friend. Be my friend. That's what we're looking for. Path. Edit. All right, since so it's look, there's no JS for the system wide path, so we should be good. So this means I, 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 I wasn't paying attention to this down here, but in the top one, we don't need it for the user, but I'm going to leave it there. All right, so we hit OK. OK. All right, then let's see. So he has a project here. The reason why we can't see this stuff is because, I don't know, he did this like, I don't know. He did some crazy stuff in there. All right, so we should be able to go back into our Visual Studio Code. Right click this file. Uh, open a command and then get our live server on live server. Boom. Live server is not recognized as an internal or external command, operable program, or batch file. What the hell, man? Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Try this one more time. npm install dash g live server. And g is for global, I believe. So it's saying like install live server for everybody who uses this machine. And there's only two people who use it, me, me and me, me, the real Casadero, and then me, Casadero, the system admin. And Casadero, the system admin, rarely uses this machine for system admining stuff. Skipping optional dependencies. Mm. Mm. Oh, okay. Supported. So we should be good, man. There it is, live server 1.2. All right, let's exit out of here. Let's go back and double check. We'll close this, see what he has to say. All right, so we've installed it. Open command window, enter. Yep, get that. Run live server from VS Code and VS Code. Right click, index, blah, blah, blah. All right. Let's do this. If we hit Control Z, S, this will save everything that we've edited. And we've only edited one file. But so when you guys are like working and you've got like a CSS file and a JS and a JavaScript file, or your HTML file, and then like you got your windows stacked up three deep like a fucking crazy person, and you're like editing all of this crap, right? If you hit control Z, S, it'll save everything. And then you can just close the window and go on about your business. Go on about your business. So let's go back into Visual Studio Code. Uh, code. Mm -hmm. I apologize for things being so slow. There's probably a way to get like this to run faster, like the computer to run faster while I'm using OBS, but I haven't figured it out yet. All right, so look, it opens up exactly like we left it. There's a new feature in Visual Studio Code where, like, if you're working on something and, like, the the window crashes or Windows restarts, as it's known to do, because that never happens, right? Um, or, the, like, the computer just shuts off. When you come back into Visual Studio Code, it will try. It, it's, it's saving, like, I don't know how often it does it, but there's been times where I've, like, I typed, like, one character and then, like, something goes bonkers. And when I go back, like, it's exactly like I left it. So if we forget to save, that's feature there. It's, I, I don't know what they call it. But at any rate, let's go here, right click, open, and then live, come on, work, man, server. Live server is not recognized as an internal or external command, operable program, or batch file. Ah, they're killing me here, man. What did I do wrong? What did I, what did I do? What did I do to you? I just did this today. I used this on my other system. Mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I get the feeling that I may have to do something with my past, which may mean I have to restart the computer or something. 
um, there is a way to so once we change the path it doesn't instantly update I think that may have something to do with it I have to look into that later the reason why I wanted to show you guys that was because when we're running a live server we can have a, a window open it'll it'll open the default browser window and then when the default browser window is open Whenever we make a, a change to our page, if we change the CSS, if we change the JavaScript, if we change the HTML, the page will automatically reload. So when you guys got some time, fiddle around with Live Server and make it work for you. It's, it, it's, it's worth it. Uh, let's see. This writing is so small. Local disk. One drive. Uh, right code and coffee. Uh, 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 uh. For those of you like wondering why I don't make this bigger, it's because certain programs like make these windows smaller and sometimes when I change them here and I plug the computer into the desktop, like this stuff all goes back to like this, everything is like this big and this drives me crazy. All right, so we got new web file. We go here, open up our index with Google, get the Google. This is our web page, right? So we have our, we have our web page here and so since we're here let's just this looks crazy right this is what this, this uh let's let's do some styling let's do some styling and so while we're here let's have a quick bootstrap lesson right so if you go uh https and i type it like this because sometimes get get bootstrap.com when i type it just get bootstrap it doesn't take me to the secure site and it's up a dob maybe i typed the address wrong and it's not going to take me there now let's see bootstrap yeah i typed something wrong bootstrap get bootstrap there is no www it's just get bootstrap And see, look, it gives me this warning right here. Look, warning, your connection to the site is not secure. But we can have a secure connection. All right, we're going to close this one. I want a secure connection. I want a secure connection. HTTP, yes. All right, now we got a secure connection. If we go here to get started, mm -mm -mm -mm. And we grab these links from the CDN, the Content Delivery Network. We're going to grab this. Well, we'll grab this whole thing. This is the CSS. Copy. We'll go over here. And if we drop this right below our title, right above our head, right there, and then I'm going to I'm going to grab this all and indent it because my code looks crazy right now. And uh, nah, nah. I'm going to indent it one more time. Oh, geez. What have I done? Oh, come on, man. You're killing me here. I know what it is. Tab. There we go. Oh, no. So you would do it two times, right? See? Okay. And then we're going to go back over here and we're going to go down here. This is some JavaScript. We're going to grab this JavaScript. Control C. I'm going to put this over here. Oh, no, not here. Put this down. And right at the bottom above our body we put our script and so the reason why we do it like that right is so the the page loads the browser reads all of this stuff it reads our title it takes the title and it puts it at the top of our browser window right so if it's a web so it puts it in our tab if we have like a what do they call it a favicon like a little icon it'll replace this thing with the little icon and then it says okay how are we going to style this page this is what we're going to use to style this page so it grabs this information and then as it reads through this stuff here it applies the styles to it and then when we get to the bottom any script that we want to run it will then apply that script if we put our script our external style sheet link at the top of the page we'll have all kinds of errors because our javascript will be trying to style stuff that technically doesn't exist yet that's why we put that's why we put our scripts up. Now we can write like straight up JavaScript anywhere inside of our code if we put it between script tags. So we can go like, 
you know, we just type script and then write whatever JavaScript we want to write. But if we're going to link to an external style sheet, we want to put our styles at the bottom of the page. All right, so control S, if we go back here and reload this, the look should change, right? So this is Bootstrap has done, done us this service right here. And then we can go in and we can add our own file. So if we go into CSS, we can go new. Actually, if we click here, new file. All right, and we can name this uh, style.css. Uh, and we didn't link to we didn't link to our style sheet yet so actually in here we're just gonna we're just gonna do some crazy you know, h1 is equal to uh, I don't know uh, font size uh, one uh, just name it uh 48 pixels 48 pixels All right with the uh, the color is uh, uh, orange, I guess. It's my favorite color, right? There's another orange, O-R-A-N-G, orange red. All right, so we'll use some orange red, bam. And then we'll save that. And then nothing's gonna happen to our to our web page because we don't, we're not linked to this style.css. So if we go back over here, we refresh, nothing happens. So what we do is we go back to our index, do, 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 and right down here, we're gonna link to our style sheet and so this this is the way cascading style sheets work so all of the stuff that's in here that's been applied it it will be there and then whatever is in our style sheet it will apply that on top of those things or underneath however you want to look at it if we put our style sheet first then there's a chance that some of the stuff we got going on here on inside that, that we're using from Bootstrap will not happen. So like how we have this special font from Bootstrap and stuff like that. When we add our own style, we're just saying, hey, like in addition to this, make this this big and add this font color in, in our particular case, right? So we'll go here, link, link. And I don't know if I can tab complete that. Yes, it let me tab complete and we can go um, CSS dash style dot CSS. And I think, is it gonna, yep. So if we save, we go over here, we refresh. Now our text is changed and look, it's like it's all up against the walls. What we can do, and and now, and now I'm just, uh, this is the last change we're gonna make, I promise. Now, because I'm, I'm getting into the weeds here. I'm getting into the weeds. If we go here, um, and if we go down to our body and we put our body in like a, let's see, we go call this a div. We'll use some emet, we'll give it an ID of wrapper. All right, like chance the wrapper, we got div the wrapper. There's an X down here, we go V, and then we'll take all of this up to here. And this is really it's blazing fast when I don't have OBS running. Like I can do this stuff like super quick. Okay, so we have, uh, I indented my wrapper. I didn't mean to do that. Uh, all right, so we've got our ID of, we've got a div that's that's wrapped. There is a, there is some sort of method we can use, but like, check this out. We're gonna make wrapper like 80% or something like that. So we'll go, wrapper. So we'll go style. And I, I know I got this wrong because I haven't touched, I haven't touched CSS in forever. We'll go uh, ID of wrapper. We'll go with WIDTH is 80%. This should make our wrapper smaller, which means our stuff won't be pushed up against the edge. We could we could also, you know what? We don't have to do that. We can we can add a margin. We could like margin left and right. So we'll go we'll go uh, margin tab margin left and we'll go uh i don't know 20 pixels 20 pixels sounds good and we'll go margin right 20 pixels and this is not going to produce a um a uh, what do they call it this is not a mobile friendly web page it's not going to dynamically size there's ways we can do that with bootstrap but um but we haven't got to that point yet so check it out, we got this dot here, this dot here. This means that these files haven't been saved. Remember control Z, S is gonna, control Z, S. 
What the heck? Oh, jeez. I'm just messing up, man. It's it's control. It's not control Z. Yes, control Z. Yes, didn't work. So there is another key binding that we would have to use. Refresh. Mmm. Mmm. And our wrapper didn't move. Oh, hold on. And our wrapper didn't move either. What is going on here? Is it padding? No, it's not padding. It's margin. You know what? Margin may not work. Maybe we do need padding. I just want to make this stuff move off of the left. Look, what the heck? Left, 20 pixels. I deleted a bunch of stuff. How did I do that? Margin, right, 20 pixels. Save. There we go. All right, so now we got some margin over here, margin over there. Page looks a bit, it looks, it looks kind of decent, okay. So, so now we've now that we've done all of that, we can we can save this by using git. There's two ways to do it, right? The first way is if we go into not not there. If we go into either PowerShell or the command prompt. I like PowerShell, so I'm going to go to PowerShell. And we're just going to go to our folder where our file is saved. Cooking coffee new. Yep, new website. And the IR, if we go type git, like git git status. It's telling us all the files that are in this directory that are not a part of what it is we got going on and what we want to do. I'm very concerned now because it gave it gave me a lot more files than I was like really interested in having. Um, Git add all not match. Oop. Git add dash dash all. Mm, and I go to an index file, blah, blah, blah. blah. So git status. So we just want to add the files in this directory. Uh, let me see, let me see, let me see, let me see. So we go here, we go to git, uh, get started. Get, get. Nope, 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 nope. And as you can see, if you go to Git SEM book, blah, 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 like to the page, this read up on Git. This gives you a, a primer of everything Git. My main concern here is the command that I need to add the files that I want to add. And you know, I may just be off by like one character. I'm pretty sure of it. Try this one. Git add. Yes, I meant all, man. Now you're telling me? All right. Git add. You're opening permission to deny permission. Let's do it like this Git add. All right, so now if we do a git status, you know what? I know what it is. It is git status. So it shows me this one file, but there is, there's one command that I forgot. Check this out. Oh, geez, see, clear this out. Git init, G-I-T-I-N-I-T. Git init initializes the current directory that we're in. 
got an empty git repository. All right, so if we go git status, it's gonna show us the files that are in this directory that are not added to our git repository. So we go git add dash dash all, git all, and then, so if we do a git status again, status, shows us all the files. We got index, CSS, with the style, um, there, yeah, there's a folder missing, uh, not a folder missing. There's nothing in our JavaScript folder, so there's no file to add, so it doesn't add it. Now, let's say we had something in here that we didn't want to add, like we had like a passwords or text documents or whatever, right? We could do, so we're just going to create a file. We're going to go new, uh, new item is uh, random.txt. And we don't want to add that. And this is going to be uh, item type. It's going to be a file or file. All right, so we got this random txt, right? So we got, if we do our git status, we're going to have a couple reds. We don't want to add random txt, so we can do a git ignore. So we can do a git ignore random txt. Yeah, R. All right, git status. And then we go git add. I think I got this right. Git add dash dash all. Git status. Oh, it added our random txt. Git ignore. git ignore is not a git command. There is, all right, so check it out. There is a git ignore, I know that, git ignore. Mm -mm -mm. It is an actual file, git, git ignore documentation is right here, oh, synopsis. A git ignore file specifies intentionally untracked files that git should ignore. All right, git ignore. Affected each line in the git ignore file is blah, 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 blah. Pattern read from a dot git ignore file in the same directory as the path. All right, so we need to create our git ignore file. So that's super simple, right? We just go here, bam, 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 bam. All right, so new item is dot git ignore. Oh, is it a text file? It gotta be a text file. It's usually really like this, git ignore. Uh, so item type. It's gonna be a file. All right, so we got to get ignore right there, and then we want to edit it, and we want to leave out random.txt. All right, so copy. And actually, for this, we're gonna go example git ignore file. Some common git ignore configurations. Configure our reactions. So check this out. Look, oh, look at all of these. Look at all of these. We're just gonna, just gonna grab these right here. Copy. We're gonna put them right in our get ignore file. Our very own get ignore file. There's two ways we can edit this, right? We can open this in code. Like, so if we just type code.getignore, we'll open our get ignore file. Or we can use a text editor like vim. And we type vim.getignore. And that'll open that'll open it inside of the Vim editor, which is a command line based text editor, which is really cool, a bunch of cool commands. Not gonna get into that now, cause we'll be here all night. Wait, look up Vim and look up, uh, there's Vim, there's Neo Vim, and then there, there's, another, there's another version of Vim. They all do the same stuff, just in different kind of ways, essentially. So we'll go code, uh-oh, code.get. Ignore. There's our git ignore file and look, check it out. We get a little GitHub kitty right there that matches the right code drink coffee, or the right code drink coffee matches the little GitHub kitty Octocat man. And then we just paste in all our stuff. And if we don't want to include that one file, so look dot com deal ftxt. Nope, no txts on there. We can literally say do not include what is that file? 
uh, random, random.txt, save. All right, and close this. And now this should work. Uh, <coughs> get status. Or sorry, get ignore. Uh, get just add. Actually, uh, get remove. So this is this is this is web development at its finest. It's a bunch of Google. Uh, remove file from Git add. We are not the first to run into these sorts of problems, and somebody has written about it on the internet. Git dash remove file stage stage for Git commit will remove a file. Git dash remove files will remove a file name. All right, so undo Git add. All right, git reset file name txt, git undo git add. What the heck? Let's try git reset in public, undo or git add. All right, git reset file name. All right, so let's try that. Uh, let's go back here. All right, git reset random txt. Git status. All right, so we got our two files we want to add. Now we can do what's called a git commit. So we do a git commit uh, origin origin master. Then we have to put like some text in here. I think I think we have to put like a message. Error pass origin did not match the file type git commit. So back here again, here we go. <sighs> git commit. Ah, uh, the documentation is gonna give us like every possible scenario. Which we do want to know at some point, but for right now, you know, mm, 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 mm. get commit man page, changing commit message, get commit dash. Ah, you're right, there it is. Okay, the master comes later on. All right, so we go get commit what? dash m first. Commit. All right. So if we do a git status, our files have been added. Now the next step would do would be to to do a git push, and to do that we have to be connected to GitHub. Um. Let's see. Connect. Git hub to git. All right, so this is this is something I tackled before. There is there is no up, there is no, I, I don't like saying that there is no way to do it, but right now there is no, a, oh man, there, the, the, to my understanding, there is no API that allows us to like create a new repository on GitHub. So we would actually have to log into GitHub, create a new repo, and then use that repo to commit our files to. And I don't want to do that for these particular files. But you know what? I can. Right. Uh, so if we go github.com All 
And I've logged in before at some point, I'm sure. So let's see, we need a username or email address, Windows one. Now what I'm doing now is I'm gonna go log into my GitHub. And I use a password manager for everything. So I got like 700 different passwords. So 3.5.1. Oh man. Bum, 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 bum. Okay, there we go. All right, let's see. Uh, hmm. the that's a dead room. Sure, why not? So I'm 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 Lizard in, and if we go down here, right? So this is the all the repo. So we go repo, new repo, new repo dog, repo dog. My name is YouTube Live. All right, and this is this was me giving a this was me talking about how to use GitHub. We can make this public or private. I'll leave it public. Initialize repository with the README. I don't need to do that. The a README is just like what our file does, how it does it, like how to use it, stuff like that. Nothing special here. Create repository. When we create the repository, it is going to give us an address. Right, so we'll copy this address. What the hell? All and then, and then, when we are in our. Do -do 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 See, warning, never get at, commit, or push sensitive information to remote repository. Include, but is not limited to passwords. So it tells us all the stuff not to do. Get init. We did a get add. We did a get commit. First commit. Now we want to do get remote add origin master, then the remote repository URL. So we go right here. Uh-oh. Oh, come on, man. It's so slow, so slow. All right, let's clear this out. Uh, what was it? Git. Git, 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 remote, add. Let's make this bigger. Look, and I'm copying it from right here. Git, remote, add, origin, and then that link, if I, um, okay. Nope. So when we're pasting stuff in a PowerShell, let's go back to the browser here. Where is the GitHub page? So if we copy this, copy, and then if we go back here to this, if we right click in the window, it should paste, right? Should enter. All right. I know that didn't work because origin is spelled wrong. All right, it seems to be working in the background. Uh oh, something has something has gone down. Right, let's see. Ooh. 
I don't know if that worked. All right, yeah, to include, commit it. Yes, 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 I understand these, I understand these things, let's go back, so I, I did something wrong, all right, get remote ad, set this new remote, get remote dad v, verify the new remote URL, get push origin, okay, this is where, get remote dash v, let's check it, let's check it, check it, check it, check it, check it, Get remote dash v. Uh, uh, I typed something. There we go. It's clear. Get remote dash v. All right. Let's so get push or regen master. And this should ask me for some sort of log on credentials. Oh, there we go. All right. So if we go here and change this, so you and we're back. Uh, get it. This is us pushing uh, Delta push. All right, let's do it. So we're pushing our project up to GitHub right now. So if we, and it's there. So if we go back over here to this thing, back here, and then we go over to, well, we can't see the YouTube live. We're all of repositories, repositories, repositories. We gotta have some repositories. All right. Updated 13 seconds ago. So if we roll over in here, right, we've got our CSS folder, we've got our index folder. If there was a readme, there'd be a readme file. We can just type add readme, blah, 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 blah. And now what's cool, right, is you guys, this is very basic HTML. There's nothing special in here. But it, hey, you guys could fork this repo. You can download, you can clone it. So you have like this basic stuff here. You can fork it so you can take it and modify it and you can branch it back into the original original file and all this other stuff so that's what github is all about and then there you can put private stuff i think a private account is like seven bucks a month and it gives you more features but yeah that is the basics of github and then as bonus and i haven't done i've never done this before right if we go in here there is a way to set up github to work with our visual studio code Oh, what is going down, Jack? Source control is crazy. Ooh, 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 I'm trying to get my bearing here. This is this is crazy. My stuff going out here. Stage changes. Message. So check this out, right? Visual 
Studio version control. Team Foundations, we don't want that. We don't want Visual Studio. We want Visual Studio Code. Version Control, Git. Let's just try this. And then we'll open another tab real quick. Visual Studio. Code get. Oh. I think I saw the one we we're looking for right there. What is this? That's me. We don't need that no more. Okay. All right. So right here we get a nifty video on how to do this. Let's go check this one out real quick. Microsoft Video Studio, GitHub, Microsoft. There we go. Not looking for that because this is Microsoft's GitHub repository, version control, and Visual Studio Code, Visual Studio Code. All right. I think this is what we're looking at over here. All right, using version controls for CSS, CSS provider, get support. So this is a little more in depth than I planned on it being. So I'm going to. Not tonight, but at some point, I'm going to look at setting this up in Visual Studio Code. But you guys can see exactly how to, you guys have just seen exactly how to do it inside of PowerShell and the command prompt for that matter. The only thing to really remember is that when you want to do a version control, like either you have to add specific files from a folder or you have to get ignore the files that you don't want to version control. And then, uh, and then they, there you go. So, but the best recommendation would be is for like each separate project to have some sort of git to have a to have a to, to you got to come up with a way to organize all your crap, right? So you all organize all your stuff into basically project folders is what I would do. And in the olden day, well, not even in the olden days, but in some editors, there's like. To create a project, you would have a project file in Visual Studio Code. They did a, they didn't do away with the project file, but they say just organize your stuff in a folder, right? So if you have, if you have a folder that's your main project, and then you have all these pieces of your main project in subfolders, you have this structure like already there for you to use. So why not just use that? And then when you do a git add, you can just you can add the ignore files throughout your development cycle or at the very beginning or whenever and then whenever you modify anything you just do a git add all and then you can use that to do your version control and then you can just git push origin master once you have everything set up and then it, it all just goes up to the cloud and every time we do a git push it it updates in github so everybody can see if we have our if we have our repository public others can see that and they can you know they can copy it they can fork it they can do whatever they want with it and there's hundreds of thousands if not millions of repos on github with all kinds of stuff like there's completely 100 percent built websites like everything that you need like you can just go clone it or fork it and if you have the permission you can use it to do whatever you want so that's what github is all about i would like to thank you guys for hanging out here with me the real casadero that is the story that's how you get Git set up. That's how you get Git popping and do what you need to do with Git and GitHub. Not really in depth, but for a beginner, like th that is the basics, man. That's all you need to know to get started and to like have a GitHub account and start putting stuff on the internet. And of course, if you read and study on your own, you're going to get better. You're going to get faster. You're going to know how to do more stuff. I have another GitHub account where I have like tons, tons more stuff. But I don't, I don't use, I, I, when I, when I became the real Casadero, like I switched everything to the, well, I didn't switch everything to the real Casadero. I have the real, I made the real Casadero GitHub and there's like, there's all kinds of stuff that if we look at my OneDrive folder, so if we go, uh, CD, another, another, here, check this out. There is, here's a, here's a, here's another quick tidbit. So you're messing around in PowerShell. 
you can make variables and there is a home variable right so if we go cd dollar sign that's a variable h and then hit tab it's gonna bring up home this takes us to our main directory you can go cd one fraud take us back to one fraud but we can we can make variables for everything while we're in powershell now once we exit these variables don't work anymore but like when we're adding a PowerShell script, our variables are gonna start with a dollar sign. So at any rate, so we're in OneDrive, we go through the OneDrive folder. This is stuff that, this is everything that I've done with development since like 2015, right? Or anything like development, marketing, sales, said I've got the best year ever, which was like a personal development course. I've got, I don't even know what's in this archive, documents and stuff from school and old computers, email attachments, stuff that I saved. These are pictures for like my dream board. The, uh, I was probably doing like some app tutorial or something where I wrote an application in here, first JavaScript project, um, graphics for different kinds of like all this stuff and then like there's like class folders down here somewhere and class files there's all kinds of stuff in here so there's a bunch of stuff in here that I haven't uploaded that I that is going to end up in git like look at all these javascript files right so I've got movie db methods db and then and there's another folder the right code drink coffee folder where I have even more stuff. So I've got a bunch of stuff that I haven't committed, a bunch of files, snippets, and all kinds of nonsense that I haven't uploaded. And I was going to do that one day, and then I was like, dude, I don't have Git. So the next, when I get ready to install Git, I'll like show you guys. And then it turned into this thing where instead of like installing Git, so I could show you guys, it was like waiting to show you guys so I can install Git. And so thanks, thanks, thank you, thank you, YouTube Live. Uh, GitHub is one of those skills you need on the, he, he's right. Now I will tell you this, right? So jo jo Johan said, it's a skill you need on the job. There, like some companies use like different version control systems. Like Git, they all work pretty much the same. They all do the same thing, but the commands are different. Like there's subversions, and then there's like, I think there's another one. Microsoft has like Team Studio for like enterprise projects and stuff. But if you learn Git and like wrap your head around like what version control is, version control is and what it means and what it does, then you're good to go. And yes, like nine times out of 10, GitHub is going to be the stuff. And if you learn it and you know it, like you're going to be like light years ahead of tons of people and you'll be you'll be doing stuff that, that you will blow your own mind. Right. Like I, like when I was in, when I was in school, I was using I was using GitHub and I was using this other pro this other online service that I would I would have a I would have a graphics design. I had a graphics design, a web development class and a. I think I had two web development classes. I had a lot of computer classes all at one time when I was in when I was going to college. And I knew Git and some of the instructors didn't know Git or GitHub. And what I would do is is I I worked out I worked it out so my assignments I would I would program all my assignments and then I would I would push them to GitHub inside of a Git repo. And then well, my one teacher, he had a class where he would, he, like he had us post our work to a web server, but it was his web server. So I had this, I had this, this online program that would take my Git repo and it would like post it to his, to his server. So I could type my, my work and then I can do a Git add all, Git push get get commit type my message get push origin master and then that was it and then like my work would go up to it would go to to class the problem is is that like there was there was an issue with overwriting so if 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 i did if i pushed and the folder that i was pushing in my commit if it already existed like the files inside of that folder wouldn't overwrite the files on the server so there was a couple times where he gave me a bad grade because he said I didn't do the work or I didn't I didn't I had the wrong answer or something. And I'm like, dude, like here's the file right here. Your file server won't let me overwrite the file that I I did already. So I have to like go in manually and do this stuff. And he's like, well, you got to go in manually and do it. And so this is this is the great guy. I'm gonna go back and visit him one day. He's fantastic guy. 
But this is the kind of nonsense that goes on in school, right? So we're in this class about web development. I'm using web development technology that web developers are using. I've come, I've automated my whole system, right? I type my homework. I do, I do, nobody, nobody in class is using version control. So I have every change that I've made for every assignment that I've done in all of my classes, I have version control. So I'm like, I can show him this is where I started with this one line of code and this is my progression all the way up to here. Like, so there's no way he can say like, you, you could have just done this right now. Like I could show him my Git repository and say, look, right. Like what you're seeing, I committed like last night at 12 PM and I did another push this morning at, at two, but it didn't work. And so I could, and so now he, now he's like, Oh wow. But I've come up with this whole system to to, to, to to like turn in my assignments that is that is very it's like production level stuff, like stuff that you're going to use when you get out of school. But here I am in class getting a bad grade because I'm not following their antiquated system, which is kind of goofy. But that's the that's the that's the sort of stuff you run into. And again, he's a great guy, but he's like, yeah, you then you just have to go in and manually do this. And it was funny, right, is after he showed us the first day and I wrote this whole system to like do all this stuff, I couldn't remember how to do it manually. Like I like I had I didn't I didn't remember the website. I didn't remember the login credentials. I didn't remember anything. So I had to go back through my system and like, look, OK, this is the address that I put in here to do this. Oh, what's the password? How do I do a password reset? And I got to call the guy or email him or whatever. So it was like this crazy thing. But at any rate, guys, that's enough of me talking about that. This should be enough Git to get you started using Git. And I mean, you can version control everything. Like if you work at a at, at a desk job where you're typing stuff and you want to keep it, you do version control. I wouldn't store it on the Internet in GitHub, depending on what kind of job you have. But yeah, you can version control it right on your own computer.